everybody, welcome back. We are here for another week of Overwatch League. So, welcome to week number 25. Wow, time's flying by. You know, we're getting real close. Um, taking a really quick peek at last week's matches. Um, there wasn't a whole lot of, like, huge upsets or anything like that. Um, we had a crazy battle for Texas, which saw uh, Dallas reverse sweep Houston. Um, but, I mean, other than that, you know, we saw Supers, Supers Genji. Um, that was, uh, it was, it was more clean than I thought it was, to be honest. Like, he had some nice plays in there. He also had some, uh, legitimate zoning blades, but, um, but yeah, I mean, they, they still rolled. They still rolled Boston, even with a, uh, main tank on Genji, which is just, I don't, there isn't much that's worse. Like, that's just condemning for Boston. I mean, it's uh, it's gotten unbelievably bad for them. Um, way worse than anyone could have possibly imagined. Um, speaking of Boston, we got them really early on. So, other than that, though, I mean, it was a pretty standard week last week. We did not see many upsets. Um, you know, I, the battle for Texas was probably our closest match. It had to be the closest match because it went right down to the wire with Houston C9ing to lose. Um it was a C9. Um, doesn't matter what anyone says. Um, it's just, you, you think about it for Houston, and you just look at this season, just like last year, and look at all of the close matches that they lost, and all of the things that they just can't capitalize on. Um, and, you know, it is it is what it is. You know, that's what happens when you, you have one main tank, and then you lose so much confidence in him that you then insert a DPS player, um, onto main tank, I mean, Hydration looked just completely out of pace, like, out of whack, terrible, out of his element on the Winston and the Rhine. Um, I think the only time you can actually run him on a main tank in an OWL, um, game is on Arisa. I mean, I mean, maybe ball a little bit if ball is better, but we're not seeing a lot of ball anyway, so that doesn't matter. Um, but it's a rough situation. Like you don't, you don't have a the the money to pick to pick up a real main tank player. Um, you have you you have so little confidence in Muma, who is still a good Winston player at least. Um, so that was rough. Um, it's just it's rough to see Houston this year just underperform and undercut themselves time and time again. Um, so we're starting to see that a little bit of a cliff develop. Um, but don't want to spend too much time on that. Um, let's jump into the predictions because once again, as you can see, we have a whole bunch of games coming up. Um, so we're going to get right in. Two games once again on Friday. Um, so we get a couple of afternoon matches uh, to kind of start off your weekend, which I which I like. I like that they, they're doing this. Uh, first one shouldn't be super entertaining. We got Atlanta Rain going up against Boston. So Baby Bay did officially retire. Um you know, it's another another prominent, popular, little bit divisive um, North American player that has retired. You know, you think about him, you think about Sinatra being the really big one. Also, Corey, a fan favorite. Um, a lot, a lot of NA players retiring. You know, Baby Bay hasn't really said what he's gonna do. He said like lots of plans for lots of like content, but that's what every single player says when they retire um he did not immediately switch over to valorant like um example sinatra um so it might be interesting to see what baby bay does in the future um you know he was never my favorite player um i wasn't always a huge fan of his antics um but i do think that the game will suffer for him not being in it um i think he just he had a big personality and those are really nice to just to have in the Overwatch League. But anyway, Atlanta, they're, you know, they're still in good hands. You know, you think about uh, Edison and Urster, pretty nasty combination. Um, they they still got players. You know, they still got Sharp, who hasn't played in a while. But, you know, he's another good DPS player that's sitting on the bench. So, um, Atlanta not going to suffer too much for this in terms of talent, at least. Um, so, they're going to mop the floor with Boston here. This is a 3-0. Um, Boston are back to their... Um, in middle of this year before they had their little uptick where they got a win or two. Um, they are now back to the, oh, good God. They are just absolutely brutal to watch. So 
Atlanta gonna clean this one up with ease. Um, not much more to say about it. <laughs> then we got a good one. Florida Mayhem versus San Francisco Shock. So, um, I don't think Shock are gonna roll with Super on the Genji this time. I think they're gonna have to pay Florida the respect they, they are dude. Um, they did just pick up Tayo, um, a pretty long-time uh, contenders player. So, it'll be interesting to see if he gets any sort of playtime at all um, coming up. But, like I said, should be a competitive match. You know, Florida looked really solid last week. They got a nice 3-1 to victory against Atlanta. Um, I don't think they're going to beat San Francisco. I think San Francisco is standing pretty tall as the de facto you know, number three at lowest team right now. Um, they're definitely at least number, I would put them at number two in NA. Um, you know, you got to put Paris at one just because of their, uh, win in the tournament and then their success following it and leading up to it. Um, but I think shot, uh, shocker definitely, you know, your number two after that. Um, but this is going to be a prove it game for Florida. You know, I think we have a, a couple of teams in the NA region where it's like, okay, you know, you've had, you've had a good season or you've shown like good hints. Now you're going to be tested against some really good teams. So. Uh, we'll see what Florida can do. You know, I think they'll keep it relatively close. I think they steal a map. Um, but in the end, I don't really see them forcing it to map five. Um, I think San Francisco, you know, we talk about how they're um, pretty unbendable in terms of meta, you know, with the depth of their roster. So I think that in a fun, entertaining match, San Francisco pulls away in the second half and takes it three to one. We move over to the APAC region. Soul Dynasty coming off of a 0-3 defeat to the Spark. Um, you know, classic soul getting, getting three owed name a more iconic duo. Um, Chengdu hunters coming off of a big win. You know, it broke their huge losing streak sitting at now five and 14 after pulling off a very improbable, crazy reverse sweep against New York. Um, we saw late young come in and just kind of pop off on Zarya, um, in the second half. So that was kind of crazy to see and them use him to such an effect. Um, it's just, I just feel so sad for New York and their fans. Like this team is, they're so, there's so much potential, but it just feels like they're going to fall short of it once again. Um, but you know, it's a very nice win for Chundu. Was well, maybe, you know, people are starting to have a little bit more confidence in them. I'm going to take soul 3 here though. The, these matches always seem to just kind of roll into soul's favor. Um, Seoul usually has trouble, you know, when they're when they're facing the higher seeded teams. You know, they they just can't beat Shanghai. Um, they also can't do anything when they're against uh, Guangzhou or Hangzhou, and then New York. But when they're up against London and Chengdu, they're able to uh, get these wins. So, I think they do so. Um, I don't know how repeatable uh, the Zarya is for Chengdu. I don't know if they can run that again to great effect. You know, maybe maybe it'll go up against Seoul's handcrafted strategy of the Winston Zarya, which has never worked for them one time. Um, but yeah, a match between two very inconsistent teams, but at least Seoul has had their highs this season. And like I said, they've done better against the lower, uh, the lower tier teams of the APAC region. So I think they'll get the job done here again. I'm going to say it's a three to zero. Then we got Shanghai dragons facing off against the spitfire. So you know, we've seen it before. I'm going to go with a 3-1 to one here for Shanghai. Um, London, you know, they play scrappy a lot of times against even the best teams in the APAC region. You know, they keep a couple of maps close. Sometimes they grab a map. Um, you know, th this team, they hop players. You know, there's players all around. Um, I think that they're a season away from competing, though. I think that next year, um, you know, maybe with an addition or two, but with more time, you know, good coaching, and a, and a full season of experience under their belt, I think this team could be really, really good next year. But that being said, they're not quite ready to stand up to Shanghai yet. Um, you know, I think the Dragons, they won't have the MVP, I don't think, but you can make a case for a couple of players in their team. And they have Lip, who in my opinion is the rookie of the year. Um, you know, if you're splitting up in regions, it's easy for me. It's just, a, it's a super easy pick. Um, he's got to be it, but if it's combined with NA, then for me, Alarm has to be right up there too, um, with how just tremendous he's been, but personally, I, I just love Lip. The amount of stability that he's brought to this team, when a DPS player can bring that kind of stability with the pop-off potential still, 
it's just it's surreal it's you know the only one that you know you can really think of that does this every season is like profit um i think fleta was definitely that person in year one um he had you know he was always super consistent but there were also times when he would single-handedly drag the entire team um to victory you know of course the term fleta deadlift um comes from him of course you know obviously um so I, I personally like Lip as Rookie of the Year. You know, Shanghai, they have so many solid players. You know, Fleta, they've got Fleta. Um, this is, that's just like the perfect DPS uh, duo for me. And you still have an ace up your sleeve like DM. Um, and also, you know, maybe Ding, you know, depending if there's ever a far meta. Might happen. Maybe they'll buffer soon. I don't know. Um, but in the end, I just like Shanghai. I always talk about how deep this roster is. And, you know, it just is. Um, I'm not picking against them with any team except that they're going against the charge. So Shanghai takes it. Should be a good match though. Three to one New York Excel Guangzhou charge. I'm going to take the charge here. I want to pick New York, but you know, the charge, how could you bet against them right now? You know, they're just, they're on fire. They're playing super well. Um, you know, we talked about this last year where with Guangzhou, like this is towards the end of the year is like, this is a really, really good team. You know, they have a ton of potential. They have a ton of good players. They're starting to come together. You know, they've, they, they have the, um, a lot of different, um, languages, um, that they were kind of working through at this point with their starting roster lately, it's pretty much just the one, um, non-Korean player, Eileen, who is Chinese. Um, you know, they also do have guys like Neptuno and Nero, um, who, you know, are English speakers, but, you know, obviously, uh, not in the lineups right now. Um, Neptuno can't play as of right now. I'm pretty sure still, um, or maybe he could play to Sun high ping because he's away from the team. Um, but in any case, you know, I think these are two teams that are pretty, pretty similar in terms of talent. I still give New York the slight edge. I think New York is the second most talented team in the league behind San Francisco. Uh, that's just my personal opinion, but, Again, this is the Overwatch League. It doesn't matter about talent. It matters about execution, about how aggressive you are, when you know exactly when to dial things back, when to expend your ultimates, when you know that you can bring back a fight when you lose a player early. Uh, you know, San Francisco are obviously the best at that. Um, but I really think that Guangzhou have started to get into that San Francisco zone where their, their entire team is just super, super comfortable together. Um, they're very, very decisive in all of their calls. And that's just going to be better for you. New York, they're still struggling with things at times. Struggling with, you know, being aggressive but also in control. Um, there's still some wasted ultimates. Things like that. So, Guangzhou is playing cleaner Overwatch right now. And that's why I'm going to go with them to win this one 3-1. to one. Next, we got San Fran versus Vancouver. Vancouver, we saw some signs, you know, in the last, leading up to the last tournament. But two pretty ugly losses early on here. I think this is an ugly loss as well. San Francisco will roll them. Maybe they'll bring back the Super Genji. Uh, maybe, you know, fans are probably clamoring it f for it, so why not? Um, I'm actually going to make a video about that because there's been a lot of debate about whether, like, that experiment and that, like, result uh, that came from it was, like, good for good for Overwatch or bad for it. Um, so I'm going to make a video about that. But in the end here, this is a this is a 3-0 for San Francisco. Don't see this one being interesting at all. Um Except, like I said, what San Francisco is going to run. Um, then you got Florida Mayhem versus Washington Justice. Washington looked awful against Toronto last week. Um, you know, Toronto looked good in that matchup, but Washington looked just terrible. Man, all that progress that we thought we were seeing, you know, getting that win towards the end of the, um, toward, like, leading up, you know, beating Boston, beating L.A., um, you're getting to the quarterfinals. It all seems to be gone. I think Florida rolls them over here. This is a three to zero. Um, Florida is a little, they've been a little bit in the Atlanta zone where like they've been really good against the weaker teams. Um, so I see Florida just putting their foot down, um, and flattening them. I think that the justice, you know, when you look at their body language again, last week, it looked pretty bad. Um, you, you have these players who are coming from the Titans last year, who have had so much success in their, you know, in their careers, you know, their big thing was like, oh man, they keep getting second in the big tournaments. Like that's it. They get second in the big tournaments, man. They either do that or they're winning, which they ended up doing, um, towards the end. And now they're four and 14. 
Like that's a huge shift. So I think that their their mental is really being tested this year, um, and they just they don't have enough good players to match up against Florida. Um, as well as like we don't even need to talk about the cohesion because the cohesion is clearly not there. Next, you got Boston versus Fuel. So the Fuel, I mean, this is your chance. This is your chance to get that higher seed. You know, everyone's gonna have their little opportunity towards the end of the year, as we know. Um, we're not having the playoffs like last year um the you know most of the playoffs are going to be um in the own regions and then when we get to the final two for each region then they get then they play each other um but for dallas you're sitting at six and eight suddenly and you get to play boston you should win this match that should be seven and eight and all of a sudden you're just about 500 and maybe you can start to creep towards that um towards the middle you know at least the middle of of na so Big opportunity for them coming off of, you know, their very first reverse sweep last week. So they should be able to take care of business here. You know, fuel, don't fall on your face. Don't do it. Take care of business. After that, an interesting one, rematch of a of the May Melee uh, quarterfinals. You got LA Gladiators taking on Philadelphia Fusion. So Gladiators coming off of a nice victory over Titans last time out. Again, Titans not the highest uh, tier opponent. Certainly in a different league than the Fusion. Um, but, you know, Gladiators, they got back to 7-6. and six. Um, So, obviously, time for them to lose again. Because um, that is their pattern. I don't think they're ready to beat a Philly yet. Saw some good signs from them. Um, but Philly is the number 3. You know, they're the de facto number 3 team in NA for me. Um, so, if, if the Gladiators make this one really close, you know, I think that that's a win. Um, they played pretty close in the May Melee. That ended up being just a carpy, uh, a carpy, a carpe, just carry, um, where he just pulled them across. You know, the teams were pretty even. And then he was just like, no, I'm the difference. I'm going to get the picks. I'm going to just keep farming Shaz. I'm going to, I'm going to do everything I can on this tracer. So, um, I think we could have a very entertaining match here. Um, but in the end, Philly is a better team. You know, they've been more consistent. Um, I think that their support line is better. Um, I think that the tank line might be, a, I think ta- tank line might actually be where gladiators have a slight edge and then Philly again has a slight edge in the DPS. So just a little bit, a little bit of a difference in terms of talent for me overall. And of course, you know, Philly only two losses in the regular season. So they've been great. Um, I think that they clean this one up. I think it's pretty close. I think especially in the first half, Gladiators could give them some trouble. I think they'll take a map, but in the end, Philly goes ahead and uh, gives another win. You know, it's trying to secure that very, very high position in the NA region. Um, I think they get the 3-1 to one dub here. We go back to Chundu versus Hanjo. I think Hanjo's going to take care of business here. Um, we'll say 3-1. to one. I'll give the Hunters a map. Um, you know, Spark looked really good last time out, you know, taking down Seoul. A um, little, bit, little bit of a bounce back. They're sitting at 8 and 10. They really need to get wins where they can. Um, and the Hunters, obviously, a very winnable game for them. I mean, I think for the for the Spark, you look at all of their games are winnable, except, like, the Charge right now and the, and the Dragons, it's like, that's a tough ask. But they, they're a team that, when they have a good game, they should be able to beat Seoul like they did last week. Um, they should be able to beat New York on a given day like they did uh, weeks ago. Um you know, they should be able to beat London, and they should be able to beat Hunters. So, I do think they take care of business here. Um, Architects, you know, I always root for Architect. I love him. I think he has a tremendous personality. He's just a super nice guy. Um, and I think that his, his honestly, his play has just been undervalued for his, his entire career. He's one of the best DPS that we have out here, in my eyes. So, I think Hanjo gets it done here. We will say 3-1. to one. Shanghai Dragons, Seoul Dynasty. Yeah, this is a rough one if you're looking at the schedule for Dynasty. Can they can they beat can they take down the Dragons? No. I don't think they can. I think if they if they beat them, it's going to be in a tournament. Um regular season here, I think Shanghai just gets the job done. Um we're gonna say 3-0 because Dynasty just doesn't like to win or they don't like to lose close games. Um you know, they either do really well or they just get blown the hell out. And I think that they're going to get blown the hell out this week. So Again, Shanghai, clean sweep, um, gets another two victories for this week. And then Gladiators, once again, they have a absolutely brutal schedule, taking on Paris next. Um, 
And then next week, they I remember looking ahead at next week's schedule, and they have a very tough opponent. So this is proving me for Gladiators. You know, I've said the whole year I think that they could be an upper-tier team. You know, well, now's the chance to prove it. Beat Philly or beat Paris. You know, if you can get a win here, or maybe like two very close defeats, I still think you, you got to get one win here. And then it's like, okay, if they can be a big boy, you know, if they lose both of these and it's like three to one, like they look good in a little bit, but then they just couldn't keep it together. Then you got to say, okay, yeah, they're, they're middle tier, if not lower mid. So, um, once again, it's a proving week for them for sure. You know, it's, it's pretty tough when you got two matches a week. A lot of teams only have one on um, this time of year and to face the two teams who are in the finals of the summer showdown is tough. Um, uh, I really want to pick an upset here, but I just can't. Um, I think Paris is a bit too strong. I think they're going to have just a couple of carry moments, um, on the DPS. I think soon's probably going to like win them a map too. Soon always pops off against gladiators for some reason. Um, I'll say this one goes to five though. I think we get a super entertaining five map series, but in the end of the eternal, they're on a roll right now. They're going to clutch it out. Then you got Toronto Defiant versus Philly Fusion. Again, it sucks for Toronto. You know, they, I, I really liked what I saw from them last week. Um, they looked a lot better. You know, they, they cleaned up Washington like they should have. Um, unfortunately, things didn't go as well afterward um, in their next match. But it is what it is. You know, they did have Surefire back in. I thought that his Ash was overall a little better than Logic's. Um, just because he has way less deaths. You know, a little bit less damage overall, but he's getting the picks. He's using his bobs really well. He's not getting, um, he's not dying first in the fight. So I think that that's a really good change. Him and Agilities look really solid together. Um, I mean, we saw a little bit of Beast again, but in the end, I'm going to take Philly here. Um, I'll say three to one. I'll give Toronto a map here. And then you got Houston Outlaws versus Washington Justice. So for Houston here, you know, you got to get this win. This is a confidence booster. Um, I've, I already talked about it in this video, the close losses, you know, the, just the inability to finish stuff. Um, I really think that they finish, they finish that one in a clean 3-0 if they have an actual natural main tank player in there. Um, you know, if Arisa, you know, you could see some, um, Arisa coming back in the future here. So that's why they, that's why they have hydration in still, you know, they want to just keep him in there. They don't want to put Muma back and kind of throw off the synergy, um, but it's just so hard when you don't have a natural main tank player, you know, it's just so easy for other teams to focus them and kill them first in fights. Um, I don't think Washington's going to be able to quite execute on this. Um, so I think that Houston will be able to take them down. Um, let, I'll say three to one, give Washington a map here, but in the end, I think that Houston, you know, they're still playing decent overwatch right now. It's decent. Um, and that, that is good enough to beat the justice at this, at this juncture. So once again, we got a lot of, a lot of games this week. Um, a couple of very lopsided ones for sure. Um, but we also do have some ones that I think are very, very similarly matched teams, um, facing off against each other. So should be exciting. Um, you know, whenever we have this many games, there's always potential for, um, upsets, you know, week two of, um, of hero pools is always a little bit different because teams can sort of lock things in um, and get a week of practice where they can be confident knowing what the meta is, you know? So um, I think we get some surprises this week. Last week, we didn't we didn't have many. So I think that this week we will. I think we're going to have a lot of, uh, a lot less 3-0s. Um, I think we have some teams snagging maps, trying little things here and there, um, get improvements from a couple of these middle tier teams, but we'll see what happens. As always, thank you guys for watching. Um, let me know what you think in the comments below. I am super, super tired. 10 hour shift today. So if I look spacey and weird, that is why. But like I said, leave comments below. Um, agreements, disagreements, big upset uh, potentials. What do you think? APAC region and A region. How's it going down this week? As always, watch your APAC region matches. Um, you don't have to watch them live, but watch them back when you have the time because they are honestly great. Um, I hope you guys have an awesome weekend and I'll see you in the next one.